Welcome inside historic Jackie Robinson Ballpark in Daytona Beach, Florida for game three of the Banana Ball World Tour. Boy, are we excited to be down in beautiful Daytona Beach. It is the most pristine location for a ballpark my humble eyes have, have ever set, uh, my humble eyes have ever been able to been blessed with. I mean, I don't, I'm at a loss for words. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, I don't have my monitor, so, you know, uh, we're kind of we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants up here and here is my high home camera now excuse the mess up here we got here it was supposed to be here weeks ago it's a long it's 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 not worth it's not worth it but anyway griffin ellis my technical director right behind nick keldy who is crushing the graphics today griffin deserves more credit than i could ever give him in the entire world for technologically making this happen because it's it's a miracle that that we are live and that we have uh, four cameras, five cameras when you count the one that I got going on here, um, and we're ready to rock and roll for some banana ball. So, welcome inside the broadcast booth here at the Jack. This is a stadium that was built in 1914. It's the first stadium Jackie Robinson ever played in professionally. It was actually a spring training game. Uh, there was two other teams. Uh, stadiums that the city said no we will not let you play Daytona Beach was the first city to say no we will let uh, you know a black American play baseball it, it seems novel nowadays but this this stadium is just oozing with history I have chills thinking about it right now uh, it has gotten a few revamps over the years it still has the classic bleachers on the left field side we've got nice grandstand underneath us here in the broadcast booth uh, but Four years ago, they tore up the entire field and replaced it with turf. So the playing surface is unbelievable. And uh, I, I, I gotta say, I've, I've talked to Michael Deeb a decent amount about it. He spent two years at Bethune-Cookman. This is the home of, of the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats when the Daytona Tortugas aren't playing, the uh, Cincinnati Reds single A affiliate during the summer. And uh, it's just, I mean, you got a little, you got a little taste of it beforehand with our, our first base and our third base cameras showing you a look at the bridge over the Halifax River. I mean, we are in the Halifax River. We're on an island in the river. We're a stone's throw from the ocean. The Atlantic Ocean is right over there, just probably a half a mile uh, down the road. It's. I'm mystified at the location that, uh, I don't know if I buried the lead for anybody who has not been uh, privy to a Benita Griffin Ellis for making this happen because all of my hopes and dreams were down in the dumps earlier today. I spent about two hours on the phone with UPS, uh, CSX, but Grish a little as giddy as, as, you could even, as you could ever imagine to be putting this show on tonight. So enough of the pageantry. Let's get to brass tacks here. The Bananas are 2-0 so far in the Banana Ball World Tour. It's a 14-game tour. The two games were last Friday and Saturday in Savannah. We'll have a game here. Same, same exact time schedule tomorrow night. So we're doing two games in most cities that we're at. Uh, Savannah, now Daytona. We're heading to Montgomery next week, then back down here to Florida, all the way past south of Daytona. We're going down to West Palm Beach in a, another stadium that's that's gonna blow my pants off. I, I know it is because it's the Astros and Nationals spring training facility. Uh, and field, this here at the Jack, this is one of the oldest uh, ballparks in, in the history of baseball. Uh, Rick Woodfield is the oldest, so, so that's gonna be a real treat as well. And then we finish up in Kansas City with the Challenger Series against the Kansas City Monarchs. For everybody here and give you the spark uh, a few tests here and there a lot of tinkering a lot of rule changes we have come to this spot today so the first time the bananas actually ever played it was in 2020 just a scrimmage between uh the two college teams well it's one college team they split them up about you know 18 kids each and and they scrimmage that was uh my uh, I'd say initiation not only to Banana Ball but to the Savannah Bananas. That was my beginning as a broadcaster here in June of 2020. And they played the Party Animals, who will be their opponents today. Uh, they played them twice, giving game in 13th and 20th. March 20th, John Boy and Jake came. Always helps to have John Boy, one of the great voices in the baseball world, help uh, a few more people realize what we're doing. Uh, the, the people of Mobile were 
unbelievable. They, it was just 3,500 people each night, sold out crowds, and they taught us that the world does want to see Banana Ball and they're ready for Banana Ball. So uh, thank you so much to all the folks in Mobile and, and the great people at Hank Aaron Field, which unfortunately has now been torn down. I think they're turning it into a target or else it would be a part of the world tour this year as well. Uh, but that really kick-started us. So seven games of Banana Ball after the spring of 2021. The Bananas played one game of Banana Ball last summer against the Catawba Valley Stars, team based out of Hickory, North Carolina. And so that made it eight games. And so this sport is still in its infancy. It's baseball, but with a few caveats. So as the clock strikes 614, we're about to dig in in, in a baseball setting before. The quick explanation of Banana Ball is it's baseball, but it's it's sped up and it's more exciting. It's just a little bit, it's a little bit more modern take on our nation's pastime. So nine rules in Banana Ball, right? All keyed around speeding up the game and making it more exciting. The first thing things is there's no time limit. You're never fully out of it. But in today's world, sometimes you need an event that, that actually has uh, an end that you can see. So anyhow, two hour time limit. Every inning counts. So that means that if you win an inning, you get a point. First team to five points wins a banana ball game. So if you get to five points under the two hour time limit, you are victors. You can win an inning five to one, you get one point. You can win an inning two to one, you get one point. You can win an inning 10 to nothing, you get one point. You know, that, that uh, don't need to beat a dead horse there. So there's three rules for you. There's no bunting. If you try to bunt, you're gonna be ejected. There's no stepping out of the box. That is what really speeds up the game a ton. Honestly, probably out of the nine rules, the one that Major League Baseball could truly take and uh, they could fix whatever. If you wanna say it's a problem, it's, it's a problem. Uh, that is the, that's the straw that stirs the drink as far as banana ball goes. There's no mound visits. So if you're out there on the mound, you're struggling, you're out there on an island, you're either getting yanked or you're out there, okay? Uh, what am I forgetting here? Help me out, help me out. Oh, ho, ho, how could I? If a fan catches a foul ball, it is an out. Now, obviously a fan favorite, uh, everybody loves that. It has only happened once in 10 banana ball games. Um, and I'll tell you what, the bleachers on the third base side here in Jackie Robinson ballpark, uh, I think it is a perfect place for a fan to snag a ground ball. It's almost completely full at this point. All right, let me, let me uh, get through it here. You can steal first base. That's uh, basically, you're not gonna steal on a normal pitch, but pass ball, wild pitch, shoot, take off. As soon as you leave the box, it's a forced play at first, so you better be digging. But uh, you know, ball gets to the backstop. We got a pretty beefy uh, amount of space between a home plate and the backstop here in the jack. Although it is turf and, and you know, it's we got a padded wall back there, so you could get a, a ball kicking back to you pretty quick. But there are some really speedy guys on both teams, and uh, there will be a first base stolen tonight, I would, I would wager. The final rule, no walks. That's quote unquote. If you get ball four, it is a sprint. As soon as ball four comes in, you are chugging around the bases. The fielders have to get it to every man in the field. It's gotta touch every man in the field, and then it's a live ball. So on average, it's almost always a double, uh, you know, because these are professional players on both sides. There's a lot of guys from affiliated ball. There's in a nutshell, what did I forget here? Oh, last thing, because the points rule and the every inning counts rule, it's, it's kind of all combined into one. The true ninth and final rule, if the game is still tied at the strike of the two hour time limit, then it goes into showdowns. Showdown is baseball's penalty kick or, or you know, uh, gonna leave it at that. It's baseball's penalty kick. So, in the top half of an inning, and the bananas put one in, bam, celebration, people go mad, the bananas have earned themselves a point. Uh, so the party animals, you know, they can really rack up in the bottom half of the inning. So anyway, that is that is enough of, of the history and the rules of banana ball. Let's dig in a little bit to who we have on the field tonight. For the bananas, it is four-year collegiate starter Kyle Lewis. He actually was truly a reliever for, for the bananas his first three summers, 2018 through 2020. But this past summer of 2021, he was all CPL, the Coastal Plain League, where the bananas play collegiate summer ball uh, from you know basically late May to early August. They, they started as a team in 2016. They won the, the CPL championship, the Pettit Cup. And a battery mate, Bill Leroy, also a CPL champion, also a four-year banana. 
They're the only two guys who have ever played four years uh, collegiately for the Bananas, and I would I would wager there aren't a whole lot of guys who have played four years for the same collegiate summer ball team anywhere else in the country. Uh, there are a handful of three-year Bananas as well. Danny Oberst is in the seven hole for the Bananas tonight. He'll be playing first base. Christian Deerman will be tomorrow night's starter. He's also in a, from 2021. He's a pitcher for the Bananas. Uh, good chance you'll see him in relief tonight. He was the showdown pitcher uh, a week ago today in Grayson Stadium. Got a strikeout, which we call a showdown shutdown. Anytime you are able to prevent uh, a guy from scoring, it's a showdown shutdown. So anyway, there'll be a lot of lingo to learn, a lot of rules. It's gonna be a crazy night. For now, I'm turning it down to the Bananas elderly dance group, the Banana Nanas. Game Festive and original Bananas themed song. Now, really quick, I have to apologize because it, part of our whole upgraded setup was going to be uh, direct links from these mics right into our soundboard. It was a disastrophe and a half making sure we could even do this today. So you're just living with our shotgun mic sound. Tomorrow night, I promise crispy audio from the field.
Well, really, really good work there from Stacy. I mean, it was a phenomenal dance. All four Mandana Hope pulls performed quite well. I liked Jose trying to, and he shook it just better than any of the other move by Jose to rip. You just, you just can't top Stacy there. So real quick in the comment section, feel free to let us know how the broadcast is going. You are, we are here to please. This is fans first entertainment, am I right? But in the comment section, Tate, it is great to see you, my man, Nicole, Danny Despaltro. Can't wait to be there next weekend as well, although we're certainly relishing our time here in Daytona Beach uh, <laughs> as long as we can too. Uh, Will, that's an internet proven fact. Steve Kellogg, great to see you. Cadence Bell. Hey, if Holden is here, Cadence, I may try to type that up uh, in the old comment section. Come on up to the broadcast. I mean, depends on what I'm doing. I might not be able to say hello, but uh, he can see what's going on, that's for sure. Rick Moore. <laughs> here in Daytona Beach, which is filling up every second. We will now welcome out our first banana thrower of the game. It's not a first pitch, he is hurling a banana, and before that, he's gonna have to crawl on the ground and find it blindfolded. We'll see how he fares. Bruce, come on out here. Bruce has a blindfold, Bruce blindfold on. Now on all fours, Bruce. We're gonna put this banana somewhere, and fans, you have to help him find it before the first pitch. Cheer if he's going in the right direction. Boo if he's going in the wrong direction. All right, Bruce, go.
hamming it up for the crowd. That's a guy who knows how to get an applause and really fired a high pitch in there. Bill Roy almost able to haul it down, but just, just a bit too up there. Uh, Judy P missed his Facebook already. Judy P, we're only 35 minutes into our YouTube career. Also, uh, right before the Banana Baby, please welcome everybody on the No Filter Network. This is a simulcast. We're going out to the world through multiple avenues here. Uh, I do appreciate, I saw somebody donated $5, hoping to improve the uh, network connectivity. It will not do it tonight, but we will be, I, I believe, a little more high power tomorrow night. So uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll be stronger to you tomorrow evening. Now it is time for your banana baby. Mr. Bill Leroy announcing our banana baby to the crowd tonight. Uh, Kelsey Orton and Collins, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Collins, you are my favorite toddler, so it goes both ways. Now we're gonna have to take a look out towards left field because it seems as if pyrotechnics are going off, there is fire in the sky, and the banana's opponents are trying to make a bold entrance here. I was talking over Tyler Gray, the official chief party officer, that CPO. He's the man in the yellow tux you see running out there. Bill Leroy is screaming boo. I mean, it is, it is quite a scene here in Jackie Robinson Ballpark in Daytona Beach as the party animals come in and take over left field. Uh, Carrie Ward, great to see you. Happy to hear that the video quality is notice noticeably clearer, but the lagging and buffering is not what we want in the slightest. So uh, I'll have to take a trip out, get some 5G pumping in this booth tomorrow. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure that we are running on the highest powered internet that the world can possibly get. Very happy to see the booze raining in the chat. Santino trains. Steve Kellogg, they're getting after it today. We'll see if this young chap can hit a home run against those party animals. We've got nine men in the field. Justin DeGrandis on the mound. You would think the odds are stacked against our young chap here in the batter's box, but no. These kids usually figure out a way to touch all four bags. We'll see, Tyler Gray and Bill Leroy battling it off here. Bill hoping for the home run, Tyler Gray hoping that Justin DeGrandis can strike our kid out. That is a foul ball. I'll tell you what, in these, these home run hitters normally struggle to make contact, but he just missed that puppy. Another pitch, oh, sped up, he takes it. I think that's a, oh, we're, we're saying that's a, I don't know what the call is on that. Vince Chapman, our home plate umpire. Uh, did, oh my gosh, DeGrandis fired it at split there. Our home plate umpire, Vince Chapman, didn't make a call either way. I think it was a strike though. And that is a grounder up the middle. Justin DeGrandis fields it. Our home run hitter has not budged an inch. Oh my goodness, now he's tearing down the line. An overthrow. Chris Quitzer bobbling it out in right field foul territory. Breland Almadova will fire it towards second base. Now Dalton Cornett gets it as our kid with terrific speed motoring around third base, he's headed home. Justin DeGrandis, the pitcher backing up, will fire it in. Oh, he airmails it over Jacob Teston. 
It is a home run for our young man. The manager for the Bananas here, I couldn't agree that he's a perfect fit. The energy matches the team perfectly. Here is the young professor to announce tonight's weigh-in. here in Banana Land. His seventh year on the job, he is an OG, continues to be the best PA announcer this side of Mississippi, the other side of Mississippi too. Uh, how about a big birthday shout out to Ron as the banana cast and crew of the entire show parades in down the right field line. You can hear the banana band belting away. They lead the pack, Jesse Cole behind them. And then the man Nana's, Bruce, Tris, Spida, Marty, and Matt unfortunately couldn't make the trip, but normally a part of the crew as well. Uh, Princess Potassia, right there behind Marty as the Banana Nanas will take their spot in front of her. Jake, the magician, pulls up the rear just in front of Princess Potassia, who circled around to the back. So it, uh, it takes an army Two coach buses of an army, to be exact, traveling down I-95, about a four-hour trip down here to Daytona Beach. And the crowd has really filled in here at the 644 mark as we just have a little cast and crew intro to go. The Banana starting lineup. And before you know it, we'll be playing banana ball here tonight, right at the strike of 7 p.m. Hey, Banana Girl Maddie, Maddie Roberts, great to have you here. Gerald Vernado, Vernado uh, it's really cool. I've, I've been a big part of the process of seeing what you were doing, uh, creating your glove for Bill LaRoy. 
extra innings leather. Everybody check it out. I'm pretty sure you made one for Kyle Lewigs as well, the two captains of the Bananas. And they are both fantastic pieces of leather. So good work, Gerald. Happy to have you on the broadcast with us, my man. Hillian the Prodigy says 80 degrees Fahrenheit in Daytona Beach. Yeah, it is. It's steamy down here, but the sun will be dipping below the old horizon in the near future. Last night I was here as the field and the Halifax River surrounding it turned a, really a, a golden orange. It's a beautiful sight. Once again, the young professor to give out the rules for banana ball, just in case you missed it when I said it at the top of the broadcast. Funny enough, for the occupation I have, I don't have the golden pipes of the young professor. It just doesn't sound. I can't make that beautiful Bruce Buffer as this is banana ball like that man. <laughs>
Everybody here tonight is going to sing the national anthem together. So please, let's have an American on the count of three. Let's sing it. One, two, three. Oh, say can. Fantastic work by the bananas and the party animals alike. And at the strike of 6.55 p.m., a little early this evening, we're ready to rock and roll. So as I mentioned, Kyle Lewig's on the mound for the bananas. He's throwing to Bill Leroy. They were teammates for four and a half years at the University of North Georgia up in Dallinaga by Atlanta. And Kyle spent his last semester of collegiate ball at Jacksonville State in Alabama. Bill finished up five full years at UNG. They played four years together as collegiate teammates on the Bananas. And they are both full-time front office members of the Savannah Bananas. They run all of the youth camps. So if anybody has some young tykes, ages like, geez, I mean, five or six all the way up to 13 or 14. Uh, I am a camp counselor as well, although not leaders of the whole thing like Bill and Kyle. And I'll, I'll tell you what. We have an absolute blast. So check out the savannabananas.com for that. I, I didn't mean for that to be an ad. I just, it's so much fun. I'd love to see all your kids in Banana Land hanging out with Kyle and Bill. So full-time guys, half their job is running the Bananas camp. The other half is playing banana ball professionally. Everybody on bowl quickly behind for that, East Georgia State rather. Ready for another 0-2, that one gets the outside corner. And Vince Chapman with a little something something for the people. Beautiful pitch by Kyle Lewis. It was, it was really on the black. And that's why he's a guy who stuck around Banana Land for four plus years. Just a fantastic pitcher, all CPL this past summer. And four pitches, one out. So something we are tracking in Banana Ball is minutes per inning. Minutes per inning. Kyle has the second fastest inning so far in Banana Ball at two minutes and 15 seconds. Christian Deerman with two minutes and 13 seconds. Tomorrow night starter has the quickest inning. So now Breland Olmadova in the box for the party animals. Manning center field. Breland one of the more accomplished professional players on either side. 
That one lying down the right field line is going to be big time trouble. Breland took his bat all the way to first. He's hamming it up a little. He's going to cruise into second with a double. Ends up with a big round. Jake Skoll able to dig it out and fire it in. Puts his helmet on second base just to make sure that he's not messing anything up. And playing to the crowd as well. I mean, Breland, that is a fantastic showman right there. He came into this ball game two for six with a crisp 333 batting average. Too early to even be saying batting averages, to be completely honest, but you know, anyhow. So Breland on second with one down, not even looking at home plate. Now in the box is Brady West. And the catcher for the party animals takes that one a bit outside. So a reminder that batters cannot leave the batter's box. So everybody on both sides, now that we're two games into this and had a couple scrimmages before that as well, they are prepared. Breland Almadova still no looking his lead. He's a showman all the way, pride of Honolulu, Hawaii. Guy who spent a decent amount of time in the Arizona Diamondbacks organization. And Oh my gosh, Reese Hampton came in, the center fielder, to cover second as Ryan Cox, the shortstop, and Dalton Malden, the second baseman, neither of them playing Breland any attention. Breaking ball, great stop by Bill. And the count two and one on Brady West. Brady 0 for four so far in just a game and a pinch hit at bat so far. That one outside, and now with a 3-1 count, Kyle really has to fire one in the zone. If it's ball four, Breland will score easily, because remember, it's a walk sprint, and Breland was taken off for third anyhow. Dover will have to head back to second on the foul ball. 3-2 count on Brady West, and you see Brady step out of the box now. It's because the only time you can step out of the box in banana ball is after a foul ball. Grandma Marty Barrington, happy to have you finally, now that you have technologically figured out how to watch the game. Breaking ball low, throw to third, in time! Strike him out, throw him out, double play. With a one out double erased by Bill Leroy. Good play over at third base by Eric Jones to cover and make the tag on Breland Omadova, who uh, didn't want to get dirty. You can't even get dirty on a turf field. The only dirt here around home plate and on the mound. And normally I have the great Kara Heater, the director of marketing for the Savannah Bananas with me in the booth following the old MPI minutes per inning. Unfortunately, she's at a wedding this weekend, so I'm solo dolo up here, and uh, I completely missed that first inning. But I'm gonna say about four minutes from Kyle. It wasn't a world record breaker. You know, I'm just following along on our banana ball timer at the bottom of the scoreboard. So I'm gonna say four minutes-ish in my minutes per inning. Excel doc. And we'll say that is that. The crowd going crazy because the bananas are firing t-shirts throughout the stands. Always great to get free merch. And as the crowd goes buck wild for some brand new shirts, warming up on the bump for the party animals is Matt Salter. Matt, a fantastic pitcher. Guy who has spent time in a couple minor league organizations. And unfortunately for Matt, he had a, a pretty rare injury. Had some internal impingement in his right shoulder, his throwing shoulder, so he had to get a subacromial decompression a little over a half year ago. And in the scrimmage three weeks ago, it was his first, uh, his first action against live hitters 
since he had gotten the surgery. So he pitched an inning in one of the two scrimmage games. He pitched a scoreless inning last Friday. One hit, one strikeout. That was all to say about that. And now the pride of New Bern, North Carolina. Guy who has spent time with both the Cleveland Indians and San Francisco Giants minor league organizations. Fires one inside to Bill Leroy, the Bananas backstop. Bill, the pride of Dublin, Georgia, fouls that one back onto the boulevard behind us. And ready for a one, one from Salter. Salter throws a four seam sinker, slider, change up, and curveball. Four seam sits 92 to 94. He can touch 96 when he's really feeling frisky. And Bill, looked like that was the sinker down and in. That was not what he was looking for at all. Count even at two balls and two strikes. Once again, Biko forgot to set the timer, so MPI a little fuzzy here. And good take on the breaking ball. Bill taking off for first, and that'll be a steal of first base on the wild pitch. He thought about going to second, but Brady West, the party animal's backstop, able to track it down. So Bill Leroy, not known for the wheels, able to steal first base. I told you on the pregame that there was a very good chance first base would be stolen tonight. With the turf, if that ball gets a little bit of fire under it and ricochets off a catcher, it can really roll. And Bill, not looking forward to a 3-2 pitch that he would have been getting from Matt Solter, decided to take his bag. So now Reese Hampton, the center fielder, Eric Burns calls him a rover because he plays his center fielder extremely shallow, so extreme that he gave it a whole different position. And then he pinches his left and right fielders into the left and right center field gaps, respectively. Reese out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Proud of UNC Charlotte, the Niners at first base. Reese, a three-year guy at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. It was a Conference USA all freshman back in 2016. He's been a really phenomenal, really phenomenal prospect all since an incredibly successful high school career at Charlotte Christian. Cape Cod League guy with the Hyannis Harbor Hawks, team that Eric Burns played on back in his Cape Cod League days. They were the Hyannis A's back then. And then after his junior year at UNC Charlotte, Reese was drafted in the Tigers organization, 2019 through, oh, 2018 truly, through 2021, and finished up this past summer with the Gastonia Honey Hunters of the Atlantic League in their inaugural season. Salter ready with a 2-1 pitch. And he'll check on Bill over at first, close but no cigar. Seth Strickland, the base umpire tonight, with the correct call, according to yours truly up here in the booth at least. Reese won for four so far in the Banana Ball World Tour. Skies that one to right. Chris Quitzer will mosey on in and make the easy snag. Eric Jones, manning third base, will get the royal treatment. Walked up to home plate by the Banana Band. Jones out of Jacksonville, Florida. A wildcat of Davidson College for all four years of his eligibility. Ended up with the Minnesota Twins organization in 2019 and then signed by the Seattle Mariners. 
And just like Reese Hampton before him, at the end of the 2021 summer, ended up playing, actually check that, not true at all. I was gonna say they played together in Gastonia, but that's because I was thinking about Eric Jones playing for the Gateway Grizzlies. The Gastonia Coastal Plain League team used to be the Gastonia Grizzlies. But Jake was out in the Frontier League and chases some high heat there. Was fantastic for the Grizzlies, by the way. 308 batting average. Two bombs and 10 games played for him. Guy who's got a lot of pop. One, one. Bill taking off for second. Throw from Brady West. Got in time. Bang, bang. Kaz Canella, the second baseman for the party animals, thought the throw was in time. It was a good throw by Brady, but Bill using the turf to his advantage, had a really nice head first slide coasting in there to second. So Bill Leroy, I said, not known for his wheels, never stole more than five bases in any of his four years as a Savannah Banana. He's got two steals coming here to EJ. And another big cut and a miss. Before the ball is live, that one misses low and away. Eric Jones is off to the races. Bill is off to the races from second. Eric Burns waving him around third, and that will do it for the first inning. The Bananas are headed towards the crowd as they take a one to nothing lead as far as points go. They win the first inning, one to nothing. Eric Jones with his world tour leading fourth RBI. And Bill Leroy with the all important steal of first and then steal of second to set up the inning winning base on balls, which truly is a sprint in this sport. So here is Jesse Cole on the third baseline for a little swaddle race. First time we've ever done this one. We'll see how it goes. the promotion meeting today as we were scrambling to make sure all of our technology was squared away for this broadcast and I had no idea what was going to happen out there uh, of the first 14 minutes overall so not too bad they're no not burning fast innings like we strive for here in banana ball but 13 minutes in the books one inning down gotta feel pretty good about that I am prepared to track the minutes per inning this time. I'll tell you what, now I've got my phone ready. I'm hitting start as soon as Kyle Lewix releases his first pitch from the mound. He'll have four, five, six in the party animals order. Chris Quitzer, Josh Lavender, and Cosimo Canella. All three of them returning party animals from last spring. All three of them phenomenal professional ball players. 
And Quitzer takes the first offering, up and out. And the clock is officially started. So I'll say nine-ish minutes or so. That seems, it didn't seem that long. I, I know Haley and you said it was 10 minutes. It felt more like an eight-ish minute inning to me, but I don't know, who am I to say? I'm, I'm no Kronos, I'm not the god of time here. Although he's really a titan, but anyhow, we don't need to get into the semantics of Greek mythology. Chris Quitzer ahead in the count three and one. Pride of Buffalo, New York, spent all four years of his collegiate career at the University of Buffalo. And he cranks that one foul out of Moro, the first base coach for the party animals, not able to handle it. Judy P, I, I completely agree that Chris Quitzer really wants this record. Or cheese, Louise, uh, I'm all backwards. Kyle Lewig's on the mound really wants that MPI record. But Quitzer battling him, that won't be a good start to the inning. Chris off from first, he's racing towards second. The throw to right, the throw, oh my goodness gracious! Bang, bang at second base. That was phenomenal sprint defense by the Bananas. Quitzer's got good wheels. And Jake's goal with the flip to Michael Deeb coming in from the left. Where else in sports do you get the right fielder flipping the ball to the left fielder for a bang, bang play at second base? That was unbelievable. And thank you very much, Halion. You are correct, the bananas are up one to nothing. We've got all kinds of stuff bopping around here in the broadcast booth, so. Thank you for keeping us honest in the YouTube comment section. Now Joshua Lavender got that one Lavi. Prior to East Central University out there in Oklahoma. As he moves Quitzer over the third with just one out. And here is Cosimo Canella, the second baseman. Lavender, by the way, manning third base tonight. Jacob Woodring, great to see you in the chat, my man. Matt Hancock was fired up about the first inning walk-off. A little defense chant starting here in Daytona Beach. Nice slider there from Kyle right on the outside corner to Canella. Missouri Western State, before that, Des Moines Area Community College, couple years at each spot. Kyle trying to mess with timing, and that was a heck of a timing by Cos Canella, a bomb all the way to left. Michael Deeb able to haul it in. Chris Quitzer could cartwheel home if he desired, instead he'll jog. Cos just barely missed a two-run blast there. Uh, the 0-2 offering, he was ready for the high stinky cheese, wasn't quite stinky enough or quite high enough. So the party animals with their first run on the board, they take a one nothing lead here in the top of the second and now Andrew Don. Quickly behind in the count. No balls and two strikes. Donnie Manning left field tonight. So far he's played third base, first base and left. So, so far the Ben Zobrist award for Versatility, that one just misses out and up. Donnie out of Eckerd College, he'd be the first one to tell you, he wouldn't love you to look at his collegiate stats, but with the Idaho Falls Chuckers out in the Pioneer League this past summer, his first full league, his first full summer of professional ball, he absolutely mashed. I mean, he was a force to be reckoned with. That one, did he go? Seth Strickland says he did, Donnie doesn't agree. That is a four minute and 18 second inning. The party animals able to get a run on the board. Now the Bananas will try and tie it up or win it in the bottom half. So here is a sing off. I'm gonna step back and let you listen to the crowd belt it out.
Jake Skoll. I'm not sure why Michael Deeb was just announced, but it is Mr. Young Professor, and you'll be squared away. Matt Solter out for his second inning of work. And pumps a strike in there to Jake Skoll, a guy who was drafted 15th overall in the 2010 MLB draft by the Texas Rangers. Ended up spending seven years of minor league ball. That one dots the black. Solter with two fantastic pitches. Uh, that one up and Jake, the right fielder for the Bananas with a one-two count. DJ Dano says Dalton Cornett might be intentionally walking in front of every camera shot. I wouldn't put it past him. Pride of Pipa passes Kansas. I don't know if he saw a camera until played for the Lexington Legends in 2020. At Alice Lloyd College out there, they, I haven't been able to find any video of the man. Count even at two balls and two strikes here on Skull. Guy who has three years of collegiate football under his belt as well. That was with the University of Georgia. No slouch there with the Bulldogs. Great piece of hitting. Slaps that down the left field line. He's digging for two, and he's going to have it easily. Andrew Don will fire it into second. And the Bananas in business here in the bottom of the second. Remember, they trail the inning one to nothing. So if they score a run, that eliminates the party animal's chance at evening. Well, we'll have another walk-off, and the Bananas will have doubled their lead. Dakota McFadden coming up here to the White Stripes. One of the greatest sports songs of all time. The crowd getting into it, too. DMAC, as they call him, in Chatham County out of Rocky Point, North Carolina. The Juco Bandit. That one skirts away from Brady West. Heads up, base running by Jake Skoll. And now Baby Shark will blare as that one will go as a wild pitch. Now the inning tying run just 90 feet away, we'll see. How Adam Viro and, well, it's truly Adam Viron. Everyone calls him Viro, though. Adam Viron and Adam Morrow, Adam Squared, the head coaching. I'm not, a, I don't know what I'm saying. Viron's the head coach, Adam Morrow's the assistant coach. The coaching duo for the party animals will see how they play it. They're going to bring the infield in on a powerful, powerful man. DMAC spent a year at Wake Tech Community College. And then Prince George's Community College, redshirted there in 2016, played in 2017, spent his last two years of college ball for Keystone College, the Giants. And he skies one in the infield. This is exactly what the party animals needed, at least. And that one dots the outside corner. Matt Salter looks phenomenal here in inning number two. Productive chance to put a point on the board. But now with two down and nobody on, Danny Oberst will either try and get something going or just end the inning himself with a walk-off. Jeez, I missed Split taking over a third base camera there. Danny, a three-year banana. First two years of his college career were at Indian Rivers Community College. He's a Largo, Florida product, so it wasn't too far from home. And there is a fly ball deep to center field, all the way back to the track, and making the catch down to one knee is Breland Almadova. Danny flirted with him, but hit it to the wrong part of the par ballpark, 400 feet to dead center. And here is your player dance for the evening. 
Still just one to nothing bananas after two innings of banana ball. Christian Deerman, Colin Ledbetter, Malachi Mitchell, William Quasigro, and their fearless leader, the Bananas Dancing First Base Coach, Macy O'Harrison, with an unbelievable performance, as it always is from them. So, who can get their opportunity to shine on social media, especially on TikTok. So both teams gifted an extra hitter. That's why it's 10-man lineups for both sides. It'll be... Sam Claycamp, Dalton Cornett, and Zach Wallen. And the count one and two now on Slim and Sammy. Sam a 2018 banana collegiately. Swings and misses, great slider. Bill caught it, Sam was hoping to try and dig to first base, but nothing going there. That is four strikeouts for Kyle Lewigs and a good start to the inning, one out, 40 seconds in, speed-wise at least. <laughs> Shark teasing the people in the stands here. Adam Morrow and someone from the Bananas dugout. Adam Morrow is the first base coach for the Party Animals. A little Gangnam style on that pitch. Fires it in low to Cornette, though. The shortstop for the Party Animals ahead 2-0. As I mentioned earlier while he was in the field, pride of Alice Lloyd College and grew up in Pippa Passes, Kentucky. On the Alice Lloyd campus, his dad pretty much runs the town and the university. And the count runs full at three balls, two strikes on Cornette. He hits a hot shot up the middle, backhanded by Dalton Malden. And plenty of time over to first. So we're having a problem with our scoreboard here in Jackie Robinson ballpark as Zach Whalen, the extra hitter, digs into the box. Whalen spent a little time with the Binghamton Rumble Ponies and the New York Mets organization. Before that, University of Central Missouri. And ahead in the count, three balls, one strike. See, the thing is, with the scoreboard here in the stadium is, oh, no, that one's a bouncer up the middle, and Reese Hampton not able to field it cleanly. He was going to try and throw Zach Willen out at first. Malachi Mitchell, in one of the scrimmages, playing rover in center, was able to retire Whalen at first. And the problem with the scoreboard is it says two to one, but it is truly one to nothing. And that's a, that's a, that is a baseball scoreboard trying to figure out banana ball. <laughs> he was able to figure it out, take, took off the two runs in the second, and we're all squared away. So that one tapped to Kyle, bounces it to first, fancy, between him and Danny Oberst. Ends up being a three minute and 50 second inning. And now the banana band. Belting it away in the first base bleachers. All right, how about 
a little shout out for Hudson Holloway, the Oklahoma Warrior, 9U. Well deserved, Matt Hancock, happy to oblige, my friend. Uh, Capsman09, there is not a thing in the world we could possibly do about the puffering. We will probably go out and purchase some fresh internet equipment tomorrow. See, we're just running on the ethernet here, which they broadcast minor league baseball in the summer. We figured the Daytona Tortugas would be, would be good for it, but you know, we've got a five camera operation tonight. We'll have another camera going tomorrow night. And there's a whole, we've done a whole lot here. Beautiful. Beautiful view just there before of the sky down here in Daytona. So anyway, we would love to fix the buffering, but there's not a thing we could possibly do here tonight. We'll go out and spend some more money and hopefully be able to power this puppy off 5G instead of Ethernet, and that will, that will take us to the land of good and plenty. We hope. We ran speed tests today. I mean, it seemed like we were firing on all cylinders, but you just can't know how it's going to be until you do it. So anyway, I, I hear you guys loud and clear. And it will be amended by tomorrow evening. <laughs> Haley, and that's a really good point. I shouldn't have expected anything different, you know? First pitch to Ryan Cox, the short sti shortstop rather for the party animals outside. Garrett Delano, the new man on the mound for the party animals. So Matt Sulter goes two innings of work. Two runs, both of them earned. And that one dots the black of the outside corner. Cox out of Alakippa, Pennsylvania. That one once again on the black. Out of Cutston University. And just able to spoil that one. More heat from Garrett Delano. That would have been right on the outside corner. No one able to snag it. That one ended up avoiding the bleachers down the right field line, so. Another 2-2 here coming to Cox. Played for the Washington Wild Things in the Frontier League 2018 and 19. Then the Steel City Slam in Sammy's out in Washington, Pennsylvania in 2020. And that one pretty much right down Broadway. Garrett Delano starts his evening on the mound with a strikeout looking. You know, for as good as Matt Salter looked on the bump, he never did earn himself a K. As I mentioned, two innings, two runs, both of them earned. That was only on one hit. And one walk. The steal of first base by Bill Leroy was really what jump-started that first inning walk-off inning. Ryder Seabass Griffin, a well-deserved shout-out for one of Bill Leroy's favorite campers. I was a big fan of Seabass during the winter camp as well. Good vibes from that guy. So Dalton Molden, the second baseman for the Bananas. Fouls that one at home plate. Count even at a ball and a strike. Dalton most recently spent three years of collegiate ball at Treveca Nazarene in Nashville. Skies that one to deep center field, put a real charge into it. Breland Almadova back, and he's going to be able to snag it. Breland has a handful of professional gold glove awards. One in affiliated ball, one in independent professional ball. He's a guy who can just absolutely track it down out there.
Alex Ziegler, Alex Ziegler, sorry, I combined Alex Ziegler, the bat tricking maestro, bearded Zieg on TikTok, over 600,000 followers for his work. Pulls out all the stops in his journey to home plate and now faces a fierce opponent on the mound in Garrett Delano. So by the way, not trying to, s to sell Garrett short, I mentioned he was a 2018 banana. He spent four years of college ball at Brown University, Ivy League stuff. But because of COVID in 2020, he could not spend his fifth and final year there. You can't be a grad student and play in the Ivy League. So he transferred to Mercer University in Macon, Georgia. And Alex Ziegler, how about a line drive base hit up the middle? Oh my goodness. He hadn't had live at bats in eight years. Worked in the cage a couple times well, about a week and a half ago, came down, had that bat last Saturday. And was able to put good wood on the ball, but you can tell he's a ball player. How about that? So bat tricks his way up to home plate and then hits a frozen rope up the middle. Unbelievable work by the Butler, Pennsylvania native guy who played D2 ball at the California University of Pennsylvania. It's a slew of injuries that ended his baseball career. Now he's a machinist. And I'll tell you what, a machine at the plate. One for two in his banana ball career now. With two barrels. The really important part of this all. Quality at bats, as my junior varsity baseball coach, Joe DeFino would say. Really the most important stat in hitting. So that is Malachi Mitchell, flash the kid, pinch running for Ziegler over at first. Malachi stole four bases this past Saturday. And it was each base once. He takes off on the first pitch. Brady West throw right on the money. Oh, bang, bang. Brady West with a fantastic arm. And that's gonna be a five minute and 32 second inning. He's slapping in the old Excel dog. And here come your banana nanas. I'll let their dancing do the talking. I'm sorry, I I kicked my, <laughs> I kicked my, oh my, that's not a fair box. And I think that's a strike, but well, it's not gonna go in Vincent Chapman's book. And Vincent, oh my goodness. Oh, Vincent, there are kids here. You can't do that to home plate. <laughs> I think that's illegal in nine states. I mean, you can't. Luckily, it plays here in Florida. You can do whatever your heart desires. 
<laughs> Vincent steals the show. So, I mean, this is unbelievable. The crowd goes crazy. He is honored by Breland Almadoba and Bill Leroy alike. That is some unbelievable stuff. Nathan Woodside, you're watching Banana Ball, my friend. Uh, Breland, the center fielder, doubled and then was thrown out trying to steal third. Strike him out, throw him out, that ended the first. Breland smokes that one. Oh, nice leaping catch. Reese Hampton out in center and Breland not happy at all. Looks like he wants to, he wants a piece of Reese Hampton. He's gonna be taken down before he can get there by Danny Oberst, the Bananas first baseman. That guy is, I don't know if he's a black belt, but he's got a, a serious enough belt in jujitsu that I wouldn't fool around with Danny Oberst in the slightest. So really nice piece of lumber there from Breland. He had doubled down the right field line in the first. We'll call that puppy a line out to the Rover in center field. You know, if Eric Burns didn't have, didn't have, uh, didn't have Reese Hampton playing so gosh darn in, that would have been a single for sure. It turns out Dan had taken Breland's bat and Breland had taken, Dan, taken Dan's glove. So we had to have a little exchange of instruments there. Now a soft tap or two first. And Brady West, strikeout victim his first time. It won't be a record breaker because of, because of Vincent Chapman's unbelievable work behind home plate dancing wise, but. Quick two outs and now Chris Quitzer, a walk and a run scored his first time up. He just barely got to second on the sprint. He taps that one to first, deja vu all over again, Quitzer sick of it he doesn't want to doesn't want anything to do with this and kyle lewis will lift dan oberst onto first base one two three inning the first of that kind tonight for kyle lewis and here is jesse cole down So Hey Baby has been danced. Sounds like some, some booze. I think it's because we've had a party animal, Hey Baby, on the Bananas dugout. And it looks like Sean Fluke, not surprising, is a troublemaker. He gets rained on by the Boo Birds as he makes his way back to his side of the field. So still a one to nothing game here. As far as points go, the Bananas walked off the first on an Eric Jones walk, brought in Bill Leroy. And both of them do up this inning. Top of the order for the Bananas. Bill, then Reese Hampton, then Eric Jones. Bill let off the ball game with a steal of first base. The first of its kind in his banana ball career. And then ended up stealing second base. 
wheels that you do not expect out of the banana's backstop. Although in banana ball, I tell you what, it's it's all about the smart base running. And sorry, we just had our graphics computer crash. So everybody watching on the no filter network bit the dust. We'll try and get that back up. Our graphics bit the dust. Here's just an oh natural view of what's going on in Jackie Robinson, Jackie Robinson ballpark. So we'll see. Griffin is working furiously to get our graphics package back on the air. And it will happen. Never know what will happen in show business, folks. Garrett Delano back out for his second inning of work. A strikeout, fly out, single, and then a caught stealing. Ended up only facing three batters in the top of the third. And starts his 2018 Bananas teammate out with a called strike. And that one chopped foul quickly. 0-2 on the king of banana land, Bill Leroy. Dan Blankowski, thank you. An emergency whiteboard. <laughs> I don't know where we'll throw it up here in our stadium, but that'll get the people some idea of what we've got going on. Strikes, outs, balls, runs, points, the timer. I mean, there's a lot going on on a banana ball scoreboard. And that one called strike three on the outside corner. So a three pitch strikeout for Delano. Bill not enthused with the decision made there by Vincent Chapman, but he doesn't have a choice in the matter. Second strikeout for Delano, and now it'll be Reese Hampton. Bananas center fielder, if you asked Eric Burns, he would say the Bananas rover flew out to right field his first time at the dish. Hey, Lee DeGrandis. Oh, oh my goodness. So Leanne DeGrandis, mother of Justin DeGrandis, party animals pitcher, is that one down and in. Reese had to tiptoe out of the way, so he is allowed free passage back into the batter's box without the penalty of a strike. If he went out clearly knowingly, then it would be different. Uh, Macy O'Harrison, that's why he's the best dancing first base coach in baseball. I mean, the guy is unbelievable. The way that man moves does funny things to people. That one shot to right, and playing it on a short hop will be Chris Quitzer, fires into first. Sam Claycamp will smother it. So Reese Hampton continues to hit extremely well here in the Banana Ball World Tour. He's now one for two on the night and four for six in his two plus games of action. And now EJ, another unbelievable hitter in his own right, will try his luck for the first time against Delano. Like I said at the top of the inning, it was an Eric Jones RBI walk that gave the Bananas the win in the first inning. That's why it is one to nothing. Even though we don't have any graphics to tell you that yet. Griffin is booting us back up quicker than you could ever imagine. Bottom four, bottom four. Long wait from Delano. Hampton's got burning speed at first, so fair enough trying to keep an eye on him. Garrett got a quick three-pitch strikeout of Bill Leroy, but now he's past the three-minute mark on the inning, so there will be no history here in the bottom of the fourth. Griffin, incredible work. Nick, thanks for popping those puppies up. Sometimes computers crash, you know, that is the problem with modern technology is we take a look at Maceo doing his best kung fu moves over there, a little kung fu fighting playing. Hampton takes off for it will hold up over at third base. So off on the pitch, Reese goes 180 feet. Let's credit Eric Jitheren for Sam Claycam with three walks as well. So he's been on base seven out of eight times. A stalwart. Is they're going to bring the corners in and they're going to oh, actually no, they're not. Oh, they're going to bring five infielders. I was discombobulated by the defensive alignment for Jake Skull, the right fielder who doubled to left his first time, just flicked the bat head out and squirted 
a flare down the left field line, like out an easy double. The party animal's playing halfway, trying to get a double play. Jake's goal runs really well, but, you know, on the Astro turf here. A ground ball. The other problem with, uh, with Jake's goal in a situation like this is he rarely hits the ball softly, so he'll probably hit it hard. And Adam squared over on the party animal side, hoping to get two outs and get inning winning run. Eric Jones leads off first. He doesn't matter at all. I mean, he matters. You matter, Eric Jones, but not in this situation. One two pitch coming to Skull. Swing and a miss. That looked like a nasty changeup down and away from Delano. That was unbelievable. Third strikeout for Garrett. And takes a little bit of the heat off him. But out of the frying pan into the fire. Dakota McFadden will swing it. The D8 for the Bananas, skied one in the infield that ended up being snagged by Sam Claycamp as he collided with Josh Lavender right around the pitcher's mound. Third base side of the mound, I should add. Josh Lavender probably would like me to, uh, to note that. One of those both guys just calling it all the way. And, you know, both, both guys thought the other one was gonna tail off. They ended up bumping into each other. So, timeout called. Oh, Garrett Delano almost hit Stefan Felton with a little lob toss there. As Stefan pinch ran for Eric Jones. Now, remember that the substitution rules in Banana Ball are you can be substituted into a game one time through the order. So Malachi Mitchell could still be used as a pinch runner, but instead Burns and Kowalski will go with Felton. The Hinesville, Georgia product. And Stefan with a huge lead, he's gonna steal second easily. It'll be defensive indifference. No one covering the bag, so that takes away the force out at second. But a successful pitch for Garrett Milano, fastball on the black of the outside corner. And he's one strike away from getting out of a sticky situation. Geez, lightning going off in the sky out behind center field, far, far away. We keep playing banana ball through lightning. We're not scared of that here. Daytona Beach. Dakota, swing and a miss. Nasty breaking ball. Party animals fire the trash can out onto the field. Big celebration. And Anna's on top at the hour mark here, four innings in the books. And I'll turn it down to Tigre on the field as we've got a little banana in the pants.
Banana in the Pants, a classic promotion in Grayson Stadium. Great to grace it here in Daytona Beach. The Jack, Jackie Robinson ballpark. Over 100 years old here, the Jack. 1914 it was built. The first ballpark that Jackie Robinson ever played in professionally. It was a spring training game. The third spring training game the Dodgers had back in, oh gosh, I'm doing this off the top of the dome. 1941, 42-ish, is that right? No, that's not right, Biko. I'll, I'll get to the bottom of it. Uh, Kyle Lewis out for his fifth inning of work and quick two strikes here on Josh Lavender. Third baseman for the party animals, grounded out to second his first time. It'll be Lavi, Kaz, Canella, and Andrew Don. Three returning 2021 party animals, and that one is stroked down the right field line. It'll one hop the wall. Lavender is going to scoot on into second with his second double of the Banana Ball World Tour. So Kyle had retired four straight. But the party animals, maybe with a little life in them, Garrett Delano able to work his way out of the first and third one-out jam an inning ago. 1946, thank you, Halion. You see, I almost said 1947, and I said that doesn't sound right at all. Uh, that's why I appreciate the, and I didn't start the, no idea what this inning's going to be time-wise, because Biko didn't start the timer once again. About 50% at this, at this point tonight, uh, maybe a little less than that. Joey, thank you as well. So now Cosmo Canella. He had an RBI walk back in the second inning. Party Animals had a run, but then a Michael Deeb RBI ground out brought in Jake Skoll. And the Bananas were able to even it up and neither team earned a point because of it. One two pitch to Canella. And breaking ball dances low. Fouled off. Good pitch outside corner. And Kaz just able to stay alive. So Judy with a great explanation of what the heck the bananas are in the YouTube comment section. Uh, during the summer, it's a collegiate baseball team, but right now, Haley and you were right, it is an independent professional team as Josh Lavender swipes third base. Kaz Canella can't believe that was a called strike three. I'm gonna watch a little replay here, rewind on YouTube, and yeah, it was, I think too close to take, Kaz. So that will be strikeout number five for Kyle. And Lavender leads off third, one down. Here's Andrew Don. Manning left field tonight, big swing and a miss at the first offering. And quite an accomplishment, frequenting Lululemon four times. That's why Andrew wanted the world to know such a thing happened. He's a learned man, some would say the renaissance man of the Banana Ball World Tour. Been to Lululemon four times, you've, you've really learned all you can from the world. Well, don't worry, be happy from Shark, the man pressing all the right buttons up here in the press box. Count now even at two balls and two strikes on Donnie. including his strikeout, one for six in the World Tour. That's gonna be a productive fly ball, though, you have to imagine. To center field, Jake Skoll will call off Reese Hampton. The throw is not even close to in time, but a nice one hopper home. And Lavi will scoot in for the second run of the ball game so far for the party animals. Credit Andrew Don with the sacrifice fly to right, even though it was pretty close to dead center. And now it'll be slamming Sammy Claycamp. 
strikeout swinging when he let off the third inning. And that one on the black of the outside corner. Clay Camp, a 2018 teammate of Kyle Lewigs, and quickly behind no balls, two strikes. I tell you what, it is constant lightning, but I mean, I would say tens of miles off, out in the ocean, and maybe on the beach, far, far in the distance, and far out in. Sammy looking for his first World Tour hit, 0 for 4 thus far, when you combine all three games. Does have an RBI and a run scored, though. Got his RBI with a two-base walk. And works himself back into the count two and two. You see, it's one of the finer things of banana ball is that Bill Leroy had an excellent block on that. And you really have to because Clay Camp could have stolen first base if it didn't happen. That one will dunk in into left center. And not long after I said he was looking for it, he gets his first hit of the world tour. Well, two out single. And that will bring up Dalton Cornett. Dalton two for three. With a pair of doubles. And Taylor Thomas will pinch run for Clay Camp. In the opening game of the World Tour, man out of Virginia Tech. Do push a run across. Double from Josh Lavender, sack fly from Andrew Don. And as we head to the bottom of the fifth, party animals with a run on the board, still looking for their first. Kyle Lewigs is. Jesse Cole and company giving roses out in the stands and Jake the Magician. It's Jake the Magician. I don't know what he is dispensing, some kind of ticket out on the mound. And I honestly can't tell you what is, oh, he's still got Kyle Lewigs out there and now an endless extendable, oh, who is ejected? Jake the Magician is ejected or Kyle's ejected? Jake's gonna take his, ex take his extremely long I, I don't know what it is. It, it kind of looked like tickets, maybe a schlon in it. It's anybody's guess what the magic man was doing out there. Matt Hancock hoping that the bananas can solve Garrett Delano, who is out there for his third inning of work. Tate and Judy, happy to hear you enjoy the whiteboard broadcasting that occurs out of necessity over the summer when I traveled throughout the CPL. Over there on the uh, third base line, Vincent Coleman is just absolutely letting it eat. I mean, the guy can shake the tush with the absolute best of them. And he's just got a body that. And a classy man blows his kiss to the crowd after stellar performance. So the young professor out there to walk Michael Vitamin Deeb Deeb, an injection of genetic perfection, as they call it. And the bananas left fielder takes a breaking ball outside. Debo for one, RBI ground out to first base back in the second inning. The reason why the party animals are off the board points wise. 
He tries to play spoiler again as that one misses in. He's ahead in the count 2-0 and against Delano. And once again, Biko didn't start the inning timer. Better late than never, though. Two pitches in, I feel like I'll have a good guesstimate of, of what this one was. Can't have had more than 10 seconds elapsed between those two pitches, right? There is a high fly ball to right. Quitzer moseying under it, and he'll make the snag. So it will be up to Danny Obers to try and get something going here in the bottom of the fifth. Really interesting defensive movement from the party animals. They shifted everybody up the middle right before that fly out to right. They play Danny Obers to pull the ball, the Bananas first baseman. Flew out to deep center field, probably about 385 feet away from home plate. And was trying to tie the inning up with one fell swoop, lost his grip on the bat. And not sure if he's gonna get a grip on the bat. He's telling Vincent Chapman, the home plate umpire, that. Getting a good feel of his pine tar. Delano gives him a little respite. And we'll get back after it on the bump. Big swing and a miss once again. Dan behind in the count, one ball, two strikes. That one up the middle, backhanded by Canella. Throw to first, not in time. All Sam Claycamp could do was knock it down. It wouldn't have mattered if he scooped it cleanly. That'll be an infield single for Danny Oberst. And Dan now three for eight on the world tour. Ryan Cox tick-tock dances his way right into the batter's box. Shortstop for the Nanners struck out looking in his first trip to the dish. Danny, although he's a first baseman, don't let that deceive you. He was second in the Coastal Plain League this past summer. 27 steals and 28 attempts. He got a heck of a jump. Had second stolen easily. Now he's gonna have to race back to first. Now he's gonna have to race back to second <laughs> as neither Breland Almodova nor Chris Quitzer could get to it, and Breland Almodova tries to jump on the back of Danny Oberst. Dan not quite having it, though. So what would have been a bloop single for Dalton Cox ends up being a 9-6 fielder's choice. You don't see that every day. And it'll be up to Dalton Malden, the Bananas second baseman, to try and get something going here. With two down. And about three minutes and 30 seconds. Into this top of the fifth inning. The party animals one out away from tying the game at one point apiece. The Bananas one swing away from possibly winning the inning. Or tying it if Dalton can find a gap. Ryan Cox, good wheels over at first. And that one, fastball in the zone for strike one. Dalton flew out to a relatively deep center field his first time. And count even at one and one on the songbird of our generation. Dalton played a year at Bethune-Cookman here before he transferred to Trebekah Nazarene. Called the Jack home for a fall and a spring before making the move to Nashville to focus a little bit more so on his musical career than his baseball career, although he still played three more years of D1 ball. And 
Rodney hits a deep fly ball down the left field line. If it's fair, it's gone. It's a foul ball. Oh my goodness gracious. Dalton Malden put that puppy in the Halifax River. And if it was about five feet, guesstimation from your broadcaster up here in the booth, a little bit to the, to the right side of that left field foul pole, he would have had a fifth inning walk off two run blast just like that. Ends up just being a long strike and he's behind in the count one and two. That ball was absolutely tattooed. Crushed into the water. Gets a breaking ball for his troubles and can't handle it. So Delano wins the battle, dances his way off the mound. It'll be, and are able to tie here in Jackie Robinson ballpark and everybody watching online. Always a really cool moment, wherever we are, as, oh my goodness, Nick Keldy, my graphics expert slash director of the broadcast, him and Griffin have been bopping back and forth. Nick just showed me the radar and we've got a monster storm trying to make its way here down to Daytona Beach. We've got 41 minutes. Uh, check that, 37 minutes of banana ball left. It would have been 41 if the game started at seven. But I'll tell you what, storm or no storm, a little precipitation isn't gonna stop this man from taking the mound. Coming down from the stands, beer in hand. <laughs> is Bill the Spaceman Lee. The 14-year MLB vet. Bill with, if I had to guess some colorful words to his catcher, He's got a very diverse vocabulary. And he's gonna tuck the jersey in. Was hanging out with his wife behind home plate. And boy, does he look good in yellow. So, as I was saying, the spaceman who will do a little downward dog out there right off the mound. <laughs> Showing off the flexibility at 75 years old. Yeah! Heck of a kick. That's toe to hand right there. Bill, a 14-year Major League Baseball veteran, 10 with the Boston Red Sox, four with the Montreal Expos, 1973 Major League Baseball All-Star, 1975 started games two and seven of the World Series against the Cincinnati Reds. Honestly, one of the best World Series of all time. Uh, just unreal. I think five of the games were decided by one run. That's just off the, off the old top of the dome. So correct me if I am wrong, my great statisticians in the YouTube and no filter comment sections. And boy, did he dial up a good one there. So Bill, by the way, making his second appearance as a Bananas pitcher. He threw one inning last Saturday, and I have to be completely honest, looked fantastic on the bump. Gave up a run, it was unearned because of a pass ball. And got three fly outs, just a bloop single, one hit. No walks, no Ks, Bill is not gonna strike anybody out. He's here to pitch to contact, but I'll tell you what Bill can do. Bill knows how to pitch, and he's still got a probably about an eight pitch mix. He throws knuckleballs, he throws ephuses, he throws a quote unquote fastball that 
It's probably around 70 to 75 miles per hour. I'm not sure he can throw it as fast as his age anymore. Just misses outside there. As that one is lined into the glove of Eric Jones over at third base. One pitch, one out. Zach Whalen, who was one for one with a single, barrels it up, but right to the hot corner. And Bill, two pitches, one out. And this is what I'm saying is, you know, that one was stroked. But Bill has a knack of finding gloves in the field as Teston nubs that one to third. Gonna be a tight play at first, and it scoots by Danny Obers. Teston gonna make his way to second on the E5. It was a squibber inside out. Bill actually jammed Jake really well. The DH for the party animals was 0 for 2 with a strikeout and ground out. Credit him with an infield single on that. I'm not sure the throw is gonna be in time either way. But then he gets to second on the error by Eric Jones. And now it'll be Breland Olmadova hitting lefty on lefty. Breland, a right-handed batter. And a little pickoff attempt <laughs> to second. It's gonna one-hop Reese Hampton out there, the rover. The Leafus, Carl DeMossi, Nathan Woodside joining in as well. That is fantastic. Genius, really. Best punt of the night as Bill fires a strike in there. Now Breland will switch back over to his natural right-handed side of the dish. The odd left-handed thrower, right-handed batter playing with Bill Lee and he gets a heat <laughs> inside. Bill Lee not, not enjoying Breland's antics as much as the man in the box himself is. And that one be fouled right side, count one and two. Almadova one for two, a double and a line out to center. Has hit the ball really hard twice. There's the Ephis, and just swinging up. Oh, foul tip, foul tip. Breland Almadova is going to race Kyle Lewix to the ball. And wins it, fires it over to the Bananas starting pitcher. So another one, too. Bill actually almost got a strikeout. I couldn't believe it. And a swing and a miss! Bill Lee has struck out Breland Almodova with the devastating Leafus. And there are two down here in the top of the sixth. By Mike Vivasis. And Mikey V waiting on it, lines that one into left field. Stealing on the pitch, Jacob Teston is gonna come in to score. Another unearned run against Bill Lee, as Teston was only on second base because of the error by Eric Jones over at third. Inning would have been over one, two, three when he let off the game last Saturday. And a foul tip into the mix. Chris Quitzer behind 0-2. Bill Lee working awful quickly. The right fielder is 0 for 1, walk and a run scored, and he will fly out to Michael Deeb in left. So once again, Bill Lee throws the outs. He throws four of them that inning, truly. And eventually gets three. It is a four minute and 31 second frame. Bill Lee continues to impress at the ripe age of 75 years old. And we got a little Are You Better Than a Dancer? I'll turn it down to Jesse Cole on the field.
absolute slaughtering of Christian Deerming in the dancing department. Fantastic work, an acrobatic performance by his opponent, and the crowd was unbelievably entertained by the fantastic moves from that young lady. So we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. The game is tied at one to one. So here's Alex Ziegler for his second at bat of the night. The bat tricking Maestro. Spins his lumber in every which way. One for one on the night. Line drive base hit in his only at bat. And takes a fastball, just misses from David Moore. New man on the mound for the party animals. So Garrett Delano goes a fantastic three innings of shutout ball. His Mercer teammate from this past spring, David Moore, will take over. David, a guy who started his collegiate career at Farley Dickinson. And that one is a hot shot in between third and short. Alex Ziegler, have yourself a night. Two for two on the evening, two for three now in the world tour with three barrels. Unbelievable, Zig as they call him, will once again be pinch run for by Malachi Mitchell, who last time was just barely nabbed trying to steal second by Brady West. So David Moore, let me finish up, on the new man on the mound for the party animals was at the University of Pittsburgh from 2018 through 2020 and then transferred to Mercer for the spring of 2021. He was actually roommates at Mercer with Garrett Delano who had transferred from Brown. David a flamethrower. Can really chuck it and has a fantastic curve. That one lined into the glove of Lavender at third. Throw to first, not in time. Malachi able to get back standing. The Bananas catcher, Bill Leroy. Unscored for Bill, but lines that one straight to Lavi. And with one down, it'll be up to Reese Hampton, the switch hitting center fielder. And now an out over at first base. The party animals got Malachi Mitchell with the old hidden ball trick. Michael Bobby Barrels Kowalski, the Bananas second base coach, is furious. Eric Burns also trying to argue with Seth Strickland that David Moore was on the rubber. That's, that's what both of them are saying with their airport technology there. Their plane directing tools. And now Burns is gonna talk to Vincent Chapman about it as well. Seth Strickland with his arms outstretched saying, I don't think David Moore was on the rubber. You know, luckily we have this all on video and I'm gonna rewind the YouTube broadcast a little. Okay, throw over to first. Bill's still in the box, nothing happening, nothing happening. Does David Moore end up on the rubber? Yeah, he's got the ball again. Okay, I'm, I'm, on, I'm in the wrong at bat here. Okay, now Bill's lined out and we're cooking with gas. So here's Sam Claycamp throwing it. David Moore fakes getting it. And I snap back it into reality. Gosh darn it, YouTube. I missed the big moment. And so did we, it turns out, actually, now that I got to see it again. So anyhow, a lot to do about nothing there. I'm gonna come back to reality and bring my Facebook or my YouTube broadcast back to live. Facebook, a thing of the past. I'm sorry, Mark, nothing against you, buddy. The old Zuckster, of course, I'm talking to.
but uh, YouTube allows us to stream in 1080p instead of 720. Comment section is popping. We can also let the audience influence these games. We're gonna fool around with that in the future. A 2 0 count to Reese Hampton, a dangerous hitter, not a lot of pop. Swings and misses there. He's been pretty much an incredible contact man throughout his entire career. The banana center fielder, one for two today with a single, ended up stranded on third in the fourth inning. As he bounces that one foul, count even at two balls, two strikes. Reese this past summer in Gastonia with the Honey Hunters. You know, I, I sell him short. 10 home runs in 46 games actually added a lot of pop to his game. And that's something that he told me about, actually, as he knifes his way out of the way of that breaking ball inside, count runs full, is throughout his entire career, collegiate, even travel ball before that, and then his minor league career up till 2021, he really was not a power guy. Never more than three home runs in a minor league season, but he packed on a lot of strength. He's gonna take off for second. Throw from Brady West is, oh, into center field. Now he's taken off for third, and that throw is gonna be in time. And no, the thing is, that's illegal. Reese can keep running. Reese can keep running, it's a walk. The party animals don't realize that that was ball four. Reese should be heading home. It has not, yes, Burns is not happy at all. Reese truly should have a home run. The umpires are confused. It should be a walk home run. Eric Burns is losing his mind. Now Jesse Cole is out to talk with Seth, Seth Strickland and Vince Chapman. And he really should not be on third base. The throw, the, so what happened here? This is absolute madness. What happened here is the party animals needed, it was ball four. I don't think the umpires understand that it was ball four. So it was a sprint. The party animals needed to get that ball to everybody uh, in the field. So it needed to touch all seven fielders before it was a live ball. But the umpires got discombobulated. I don't think they realized it was ball four. And Reese Hampton ended up being thrown out at third, but the ball should not have been live yet because it had only touched the center fielder. There were six guys short. I mean, like this is, this is madness. So, and, and it's a big situation because the party animals have a run in the top of the inning and Reese Hampton really should have scored on that, which would have tied the inning at one run apiece and the party animals would not be leading two to one at the end of the inning. But, Eric Jones will have something to say about the party animals winning this inning. The Bananas third baseman is one for one on the day, an RBI walk and a single. And he takes that breaking ball just on the inside corner for strike one. And it's understandable, you know, Seth Strickland, the base umpire, and Vince Chapman, the home plate umpire, they're both baseball umpires. I mean, the Bananas invented this game. But, you know, you gotta be adept at the rules and be able to pivot on a swing. And it's understandable that the umpires thought that it was a steal of first. I just, I'm pretty mystified by that whole situation. A little check swing dribbler up the first baseline. David Moore covering, Sam Claycamp's gonna beat Eric Jones to the bag himself. And the Bananas will drop the second inning in a row. So the party animals with a run in the fifth and a run in the sixth, and they're able to make both of them stand up. They take over this game, doubling up the Bananas two points to one. That we have been waiting for has just about gotten to us. The fans in the first base bleachers are fleeing the precipitation. I can't see it on the field, but I can tell by the way everyone's reacting and the radar of complete green around us that things have taken a turn for the worse as far as the weather goes. Oh my goodness, and now 
it has turned into an absolute torrential downpour. And we're going to, we're gonna pull our cameras from first and third base. Our center field camera is just, it's, it's along for the ride. Hopefully it's as Matt Mal Expert Nick Keldy sprinting out to center field as the rain is now coming. Looks like Bill is pulling his team off the field. So I take all of the words out of my mouth that I just said. Matt Malatesta still wanted to pitch. Bill, I could tell what he was mouthing to Jesse Cole. He was not enthused with the sign of the light of the lightning out there. And here comes the pep band. Yeah, Caps Man 09. <laughs> it's wood bat, so it's not like the guys are swinging metal up there, but Bill Leroy is sitting there in metal catcher's gear, and you know, you never know with lightning. And now, it seems like the rain has stopped. Banana's owner, Jesse Cole, says, let's get the boys back out on the field. Take We're gonna play banana ball. So you are right, we do have to stop the clock for a rain delay. Uh, the clock strikes 8.43. We never start a new inning of banana ball after the hour and 50 minute mark. And as you can see, they add a couple minutes to the clock here, you know. Uh, but we're not gonna get through an entire inning in five minutes. That would, that would mean the two quickest half innings in banana ball history and the quickest warm up as well in between. So ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the final inning of Banana Ball tonight. We're gonna get seven in, rain or shine. And it will be Matt Malatesta on the bump for the bananas. Good guy to get there when the rain is coming down. He is a splitter specialist. Probably throws about 80, 85% splitters. But he'll work a four-seam fastball, a sinker, and a fourth ball in there as well. The pride of the University of South Carolina, Beaufort, Matt Malatesta, 2021 banana. A hero of the 2021 decisive game three of the CPL championship. For four plus innings of scoreless relief. Mike Shackley says the, the only rule in banana ball, there are no rules. Love it, man. So it'll be five, six, seven for the party animals. Josh Lavender, Kaz Canella, and Andrew Don. They let off the fifth inning. Labby let it off with a double, ended up stealing third and coming in on an Andrew Don sacrifice fly. That was the beginning of the party animals comeback. And swings and misses at a splitter. Count even at two and two on the party animals third baseman, one for two on the night. And a cut and a miss. So Malatesta with a good start to his evening. He threw a scoreless inning of relief last Friday against the party animals and then struck out Tanner Thompson. Check that, Tanner Thomas in his only showdown opportunity. The Bananas walked it off. A Reese Hampton walk and then a Jake Skull RBI single to win it in showdowns. 
Now Kaz Canelo, the second baseman for the party animals, will try his luck and pops one foul. Is there a chance to catch it by a fan? No, it ends up just ending up far of the bleachers down the left field line. Two one now coming to cause, and he gets blown up by the rare four seam fastball out of Malatesta. And that'll be strike three, swinging. Cause not even gonna make an attempt at first base, back to back K's for Matty Malatesta. Proud of Brant Beach, New Jersey, as a party animal hurls a bat on the field and in protest of back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the inning, and Danny Oberst unceremoniously throws it towards the party animal's bullpen. So it will be Andrew Dom, the left fielder. A strikeout and an RBI on a sack fly so far this evening, so 0 for 1. Malatesta, by the way, started his college career at Ocean County College. Oh, look out, bat on the loose, and it dings off a pole down the left field line. With the rain coming down, not surprising that Donnie lost it on the swing. And the bat, not up to Don's standards. Looked like Adam Byron and Eric Burns, the two head coaches, thought it wasn't too bad, but it definitely took a good hit off that pole. It's, it wasn't a light pole, it's one of the poles holding up the netting going down the whole left side of the field. So now it'll be a 1-1 pitch to Donnie Banana Ball, as they call him. So after two years at Ocean County College, Matt Malatesta with three years at University of South Carolina Beaufort. And now one strike away from striking out the side. There's a fastball, misses the outside corner just by a smidge. Good call by old Vince Chapman behind the dish. And a check swing. Count will run full here. Party animals have scored points in back-to-back -back innings. Matt Malatesta trying to stop the bleeding. And a swing and a miss. Matty Ice strikes out the side. He continues to be one of the more dominant pitchers to ever don the yellow in Banana Land. And it is yellow time, seventh inning stretch. I'll let you experience what's going on here in the jack.
still plenty of energy in the banana fans here who have braved the rain and would like to see the ending of the first ever banana ball game played in Jackie Robinson Ballpark here in Daytona. Park was opened in 1914 and it only took 107 years for banana ball to be played here. Of course, the sport that the park was originally created for. Gary and Judy, in fact, it was all yellow. And the boys in yellow, with their last licks for all intents and purposes, they are down two to one in the points category. They'll need to push a run across here to even this game at two points apiece and push it to showdowns or else the party animals will have their first win in game number three of the Banana Ball World Tour. And Jake Skoll, not enthused with the first strike call from Vince Chapman. Skoll, the right fielder, one for two on the day, a double run scored and a strikeout swinging. Both those at bats, well, one of those at bats, sorry, against Matt Salter, and then the strikeout against Garrett Delano. Did he go? Seth Strickland says no. Brady West, the catcher, not super excited about that call. <laughs> it's a tough job being an umpire. You'll never keep both sides happy. In fact, both sides will usually be mad at you. That one fouled off, and the count now one and two on the former Texas Rangers and New York Yankees product. Guy who played three years of football for the Georgia Bulldogs, and then this past summer hit 23 homers in 114 games for the Gastonia Honey Hunters in the Atlantic League. That is a front door breaking ball and, na and a nasty one from David Moore in his second inning of relief. That's his first strikeout. Party animals can smell victory. They're two outs away. Dakota McFadden serenaded by the crowd. Dakota already with one long ball. He put one out of the park last Saturday. It was an inning tying blast at that. And he takes a fastball that dots the outside corner. David Moore been living on the edge. At the edge of, well, I guess you could say the edge of glory if you're a Lady Gaga fan. And working quickly, DMAC behind in the count 0 and 2. The designated hitter for the Bananas. A two-time participant in the Power Showcase, college baseball. And he's able to stay alive there. And I now see that we have our center field camera with us. That's why it wasn't working anymore. Nick made a business decision, and I don't think it was the wrong one, to grab the center field camera and bring it up to the booth. So now we are truly a one camera broadcast with the rain continuing to come down here in Daytona Beach. And that one bounces to the plate. Good stop though by Brady West. Kyle Lewis will deliver some fresh, dry baseballs to Vincent Chapman. One-two pitch coming to Dakota McFadden. He checks his swing, but that one scurries away from Brady West, and it'll be back-to-back -back strikeouts for David Moore. Unfortunately for him, a wild pitch on that one. And DMAC down the first baseline. Now we'll see if Eric Burns decides to pinch run for him. I would expect he would. It's the third time through the lineup, so he could use Malachi Mitchell or Stefan Felton. Halen says, that he likes the, uh, they like the classic broadcast setup here. Just high home, that's all you get.
Michael Deeb, the left fielder, trying to make some magic happen in his home college park, uh, Jackie Robinson ballpark. Deeb spent two years playing for Bethune-Cookman after four years at Notre Dame where he was a football player, inside linebacker, and special teams. So Malachi Mitchell, as I suspected, pinch ran for Dakota McFadden. It is his third pinch running opportunity of the evening. Because you can do it once through the order, you can be substituted in, as I explained earlier. That one gets away from Brady West, and boy, for a guy who has had a fantastic night behind the plate, he has not been able to handle the stuff in the dirt from David Moore here when it matters most. So Malachi reaches second on the wild pitch. And the only reason he was on first was because Dakota McFadden struck out on a wild pitch. Deeb ahead in the count 2-0, and a dangerous man at the plate. Former Chicago White Sox product. And now he's really in the driver's seat. 3-0, a cookie has to be coming from David Moore. If he walks Michael Deeb, then Malachi will score easily from second, and the game will be tied. Malachi takes off for third, it's ball four anyway. Here comes Malachi racing home. He's gonna score easily. The Bananas win the seventh inning, and this game is knotted at two points apiece. Michael Deeb with his second RBI of the night. He had an RBI ground out back in the second. That prevented the party animals from notching a point all the way back then. And here's the young professor to explain the banana ball showdown. Professor said it right, by the way, and as badly as I wish we had our center field camera, we can't risk it for the biscuit with our equipment, so you will continue to get the El Clasico high home broadcast here. Matt Malatesta, a really, really tough man to barrel up, will be back out on the mound. He struck out the side at the top of the seventh, giving the Bananas the chance to walk off the inning and tie the game at two points apiece. The Bananas and Party Animals had a 2-2 tie after seven innings of banana ball in the opener of the World Tour a week ago today. The Bananas won night two, four to two. And now we find ourselves once again locked in a dose e dose matchup. But this time, instead of Tanner Thomas trying his luck against Matt Malatesta, it will be Dalton Cornett. Dalton, the shortstop for the party animals. Two for four so far in the World Tour. 0 for two tonight, he was two for two last Saturday with a pair of doubles. A really fantastic hitter. And he takes first pitch up and out. The pride of Pippa Passes, Kentucky trying to turn the tide for the party animals and way out in front of the fourth ball. Guy who has played professionally for the Lexington Legends, the Billings Mustangs, and the Northern Colorado Owls, and he fouls that one at home plate. Count now one ball and two strikes.
by the way, the Legends in 2020, the Billings Mustangs in 2021, and the Northern Colorado Owls will be 2022. He has not played there yet. I'm just getting excited here in showdowns. Count notched at two balls and two strikes. Malachi Mitchell, the man in the field for the Bananas. Bouncer to the plate, Dalton with a heck of an eye. Let's the count run full. Son of former big leaguer Scott Cornett, Cornett rather, and Dalton not fooled. So a walk means two bases in showdowns. Matt Malatesta had struck out Tanner Thomas in his only showdown appearance up until tonight. So the way a man on second in showdown work, in showdowns works rather, is that is the only man who has to score. So instead of Cornette or Breland Almodova, the new man in the box, having to score from home plate, now the party animals just have to get a man in from second. And Breland pumping up the crowd, checks his swing. Getting in the face of Bill Leroy. Pride to Honolulu. Center fielder for the party animals. Just letting it eat. And that is going to do it. Oh my goodness gracious. Breland could have scored himself. Instead, he is going to drive Dalton Cornett in easily. The party animals will take a three point to two point lead. And now it will be up to the Bananas to score in their showdown. as the folks despise the party animals, I do love their yes, 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 yes uh, celebration. That's, that's pretty catchy, if I may say so myself. So the pressure now on David Moore, back out on the mound after two innings of work, and Adam Morrow, party animals flag in hand, party animals jersey not on his body any longer, tells David Moore, stay on the mound. You are our man. The young professor waiting patiently to introduce the Bananas party, or the Bananas showdown weapon. It'll be Reese Hampton with Jake Skoll on deck. They have to pick their three showdown hitters before every ball game. And this was the matchup that worked for the Bananas last Friday, a week ago today. Reese Hampton worked a walk. And then Jake Skull drove him in. That was off of Justin DeGrandis. Now David Moore will try his luck. Bryson Blevins, I appreciate it, my friend. This is what we live for, showdowns at the end of Banana Ball. The party animals have struck first. Reese Hampton has to score or walk or else the party animals will win their first banana ball game of the world tour. And that one dots the outside corner. Hampton, the center fielder for the bananas, one for two tonight. He's been stranded on third twice and he knifes that one up the middle. It does not have a lot of speed. Jacob Teston, the man on the field for the party animals is running after it, but I tell you that turf has it traveling a good distance. Teston fires it in. David Moore, the cutoff man, bobbles it. Hampton head first dive. We're tied at three apiece. Oh, pandemonium here in the jack as both teams are successful in their showdown attempts at the plate. Reese Hampton, an absolute showdown star. And now the party animals will try their luck once again against Matt Malatesta.
just off your screen, Adam Morrow had a heated discussion with Zach Frangelo, the director of entertainment. That's something you may see on the ESPN documentary coming out hopefully in the fall of 2022. We'll see. Because the great cameraman Michael, Mike equipped to his camera, was in the face of both of them. So we'll see what drama unfolded there in, I don't know, half a year maybe. So the party animals so far have been successful with a Dalton Cornet walk and then a Breland Almodova, basically an RBI double. He absolutely pounded the ball to dead center field. And the third man up as far as showdowns go for the party animals will be Josh Lavender, their third baseman. Lavi, a guy who has played professionally in the United States, Japan, Australia, Canada, and a few spots in South America, Mexico and Venezuela. He has only professionally played banana ball in Savannah, in Mobile, Alabama, and now in Daytona Beach, Florida. And he hits a high fly ball to center field. It's gonna be tough. Malachi Mitchell throws his glove away. He's chasing after it. Lavender rounding second and heading towards third. Malachi fires it in. Matt Malatesta with the relay. His throw home almost wild. Bill Leroy makes a heck of a play. And Lavender cut down at home plate. Flash the kid, Malachi Mitchell, with an unbelievable job in center field. Matt Malatesta with a fantastic relay. And Bill Leroy with an acrobatic play behind the dish. And the score still knotted at three to three. Unbelievable there, Lavi got under it. Ends up being cut down at the dish. And now Justin DeGrandis. No shirt necessary. It looks like he's got Tanner Thomas defending behind him instead of Jacob Teston. So the David Moore, Jacob Teston, and Brady West combo was unsuccessful in their first attempt. Adam Viren and Adam Myro turned to Justin DeGrandis. His mother, Leanne DeGrandis, was integral in my center field camera setup before the game today. I didn't have a ladder or anything, and she handed me all seven components necessary and also steadied the trash can that I was standing on when I had to get a steady shot of home plate. So Leanne, shout out to you. We'll see if your son can hold serve. It is no chump in the box, Jake Skoll. Seven years of minor league experience in his back pocket. Will do his worst and he takes one outside. Skull knocked in Reese Hampton last Friday for a walk-off. Now he'll try and do it all himself. They're heading the count 2-0, though. Getting the man on second base is in really a really crucial part to these showdowns. DeGrandis took a little something off that. Had Skull out in front, the Bananas right fielder. One for three today, double run score and a pair of strikeouts, one looking, one swinging. That one, oh, off Justin DeGrandis, and he's lucky that he knocked it down. He's going to meet Jake Skull at first base. If that ball had not pounded Justin DeGrandis in the stomach, that thing was ticketed for dead center field. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And it seems like Justin's fine. He's got a pretty good layer of protection there. He's the hairiest man on either side. And now the Bananas will take the field for the third and final showdown. No matter what happens in the two of these, at the end of three showdowns, the ball game is called. 
There are no ties in baseball. There are ties in banana ball. Now Adam Morrow getting an explanation from Jesse Cole over at the first baseline. Michael, the great ESPN cameraman, joined by Jason, the great ESPN cameraman. And now listen, I would never put it past the banana's brass to change a rule on the fly. And if at the end of this round of showdowns, it is still knotted at three apiece, they may keep the show going and, and try and see if we can have a winner. But as the rule currently stands, three showdowns is the maximum. Because you know, if you have showdowns all night long, it kind of defeats the purpose of the whole two hour time limit, trying to get nine innings in in under two hours, you know, yada, yada. Maybe you could get out in two hours and 15 minutes if you have a showdown, but hey, we're only 12 minutes into showdowns. And so far we have had electrifying performances, both offensively and defensively. DJ Dano, that's my favorite as well, my friend. A foul ball caught by a fan in a showdown would be next level. So Kaz Canella takes a splitter just a pinch inside. The Party Animal's second baseman, consummate pro. Party Animal for the second year in a row. So far tonight, 0 for 2, pair of strikeouts and an RBI walk. DJ Dano, I agree. I like seeing a winner and I like seeing a loser. <laughs> Check swing, that one down and out. And Canella in the driver's seat ahead 3-0. Malachi Mitchell, once again the defender. Matt Malatesta pitching his third straight showdown after striking out the side in his one inning of work. And Kaz trying to do some damage there. Can't line up the heater. Count runs to 3-1. That's fouled at the plate and the count runs full. Heck of a note there in the comment section, Nathan. That's fantastic. Cranks might have to adopt that here in Banana Ball as well. Malatesta steps off the rubber, tries to gain his composure for the biggest pitch of the night yet. 3-2. That one just misses the outside corner. Good take by Canella. Leroy tried to frame it, but Vince Chapman was not buying what Bill was selling, so now the party animals with the all-important man on second base. And it will be up to the 2018 Collegiate Banana, the 2021 Premier Team Banana, who has traded in the yellow unis for the black and pink, slamming Sammy Claycamp. And he checks his swing, did he go? No, says Seth Strickland out in the field. 1-0 count here on the Party Animals first baseman, one for two. On the evening, single and a strikeout. Riley Wooten, great to have you in the comment section, my man. Here for the most exciting part of the entire night. One, two pitch now coming to Clay Camp, just misses low and outside. Oh, one, one pitch, sorry, that was a foul ball for the first strike. So now, Clay Camp behind in the count, one ball, two strikes. And he checks his swing, did he go? Seth Strickland, no. Let's even it at two balls and two strikes. That one, top of the zone, Clay Camp can't believe it. Bill Leroy sold the call. I'll tell you what, unfortunately, the rain knocked out our center field camera. I couldn't tell you at all where that pitch was located. Split is fired up, he's lost his shirt, gives Vincent Chapman a hug at the plate. And now the Bananas with a chance to win this thing.
Justin DeGrandis out there for his second showdown. He was barreled up by Jake Skull, but it was a line drive right off the stomach. And he was able to get Skull as he rounded first base. Corey Champer, you know how strongly I feel about that chicken salad. I don't have a dog in this fight. But that's some quality food right there. And nobody better to get this opportunity than Michael Vitamin D. The injection of genetic perfection. A two-year baseball player right here in the Jack playing for Bethune-Cookman. That is a beautiful backdoor breaking ball. Count 0-2 on Deeb. Looks like Tanner Thomas is the man in the field for the second straight time. Party Animals not trying to fix what is not broken. 0-2 from DeGrandis. Fouled off. Good job of spoiling that one by Michael Deeb. Looked like it was on the outside corner. Another 0-2 offering. Michael Deeb with a shot to left center field. Oh, it's gonna be tough to catch him. He's motoring around first, now around second. Tanner Thomas off to the races, but he's gotta go all the way to the wall. Deeb coming around third. He's gonna score standing, and the Bananas walk it off. Four three victories. The Bethune-Cookman kid is hero once again in the jack. A one-two pitch from Justin DeGrandis, and Michael Deeb didn't miss it by a millimeter. That thing was barreled up, and Tanner Thomas didn't have a chance in the world to track that down. Deeb may have touched home plate before Tanner even got his paws on the ball. And now Michael Deeb has lost his shirt, but he's gained a banana's flag. And what a moment. His first game back in Jackie Robinson ballpark. And he claims the Bananas' third victory in three straight games to start off this world tour. I mean, just magical stuff here in a magical stadium. And we come back in to the unbelievably cluttered broadcast booth. But a quick round of applause for my unbelievable broadcast team because it, it takes an army thank you so much and yes shark i appreciate that it would be weird if my people clapped for themselves but the legendary pa announcer of banana land does the job for him so i mean that was quite a ball game about two hours and 18 minutes and down to three showdowns michael deeb is the hero in his first game back at jackie robinson ballpark if you wrote the script and handed it off to Hollywood, they would have told you that it's just too much to handle. So real quick here, a huge thank you to my unbelievable crew, Griffin Ellis. Without him, this broadcast wouldn't have happened in the slightest. And that is not hyperbolic. That is not an exaggeration. That's an understatement. Uh, Shark, you know what? Shark deserves a little shout out too because he's the best. He's the best PA announcer and DJ, not just separate, the best PA announcer and DJ, best at both of them in the entire world. Nick Keldy, my unbelievable graphics man and director, switching back and forth with Griffin Emerson, the incredible runner helping everybody make everything happen up here. Jan, 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 that's what I'm talking about. Jan, uh, a stud from Bethune-Cookman, and Manuel, are you kidding me? Uh, two Bethune-Cookman ball players who came in here and just absolutely destroyed the first and third base camera work. 
uh, res actually not respectively. Manuel was on third, Jan was on first. And Justin, my high home cameraman, thank you so much. A friend of Sean Fluke is a friend of mine and you did a fantastic job manning the high home camera. So this was an unreal game. The Bananas end up claiming it four to three in three rounds of showdowns. They have won all three banana ball games so far on the tour but not for a lack of effort from the party animals who have battled and battled and have now lost two of these three games in showdowns by just a point. I mean, these guys are hungry for victory. Almost no look caught my scorebook, but uh, alas, no, no great athletic feat for me here at the end of the broadcast. So I know that there was uh, some, you know, a little glitching here and there throughout the night. Our ethernet was not as powerful as we hoped it was. Tomorrow we'll have a whole new day. I'm going out into the world. I'm spending some of the bananas cash. We're gonna get some 5G powering this thing to the moon. And uh, I hope to see you all tomorrow evening, 6 p.m. pregame on the East Coast, 7 p.m. first pitch. And uh, for, all, for all of you who got to experience the pregame today, you know, especially by about 6.15, 6.17, it's, it's, it's can't miss TV. First 15 minutes is me setting the scene. If you, if you like that, uh, I would love to have you with us. But, you know, I know, I know what's really exciting here. Uh, have a great night, everybody. Thank you to the executive producer of Bananas TV, Jared Orton, and, of course, everybody in Banana Land for making this happen. I'll see you tomorrow night. The Bananas win this one 4-3 to three in three rounds of showdowns. They've won all three games in the Banana Ball World Tour. Michael Vitamin Deeb, your hero, the, uh, the man from Bethune-Cookman, comes back to his home park and makes a little magic happen. See you tomorrow night, 6 p.m. sharp on the East Coast. Have a great evening, and of course, see you later!